Welcome to the NASA iTech Forum. I am so glad that you guys are here today, and we are actually being live streamed from the Canon USA headquarters building in Melville, New York. So I'd first like to thank Canon for graciously hosting us at their beautiful facilities and allowing us to see some of their amazing technologies yesterday in some of their uh, demonstrations. So can everybody give them a round of applause? Thank you. And because we're being live streamed, I know that several of our friends from across the globe are actually uh, joining us live stream. So shout out to you guys. Thank you for, for joining us, and uh, we wish you could be here as well. I just kind of want to go over some logistics before I introduce our speaker, just to kind of help navigate what we're doing today and help you kind of have a better understanding of what it is. And first and foremost, we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for the leadership at NASA supporting me, coming up with a kind of crazy idea, doing something a little bit non-traditional. And this is our third cycle. And in, in those three cycles, we've seen some of the most amazing technologies come out of NASA iTech. And we feel privileged to be a part of it. But more than that, I feel privileged that I work for an agency that allows us to try something a little bit differently. So I'm going to ask for one more applause for, for, for NASA and the agency. We wouldn't be here without it. So this morning, five of our 10 entrepreneurs are going to present. Uh, the other five will present tomorrow. The first part of the day, they're going to give their presentations. That, that part will be live streamed, so entrepreneurs, be sure and not present anything that might be proprietary information. We will have people asking questions that possibly the audience might be wondering if we have extra time, then we'll open a mic and allow anybody in the audience. But generally, your, your question and answers will come from the panel that you're seeing up here. I, um, we will be handing out judging sheets that we'll, we'll hand out here shortly. One sheet per company is what you'll fill out. I think the top part is for the presentation and maybe the bottom part. I haven't seen it yet. But the bottom part might be for the impact tables. And which will really dig a little bit deeper on the technology. You'll get to engage with the entrepreneurs and so provide additional information as we, as we score each of the presentations. So you might be wondering why we're scoring it. Well, at the end of Thursday, three companies out of these 10 will be selected to receive mentorship for the next six months. And they will be given an opportunity to speak at the Space Symposium in Colorado Springs to DOD and several other agencies that might possibly be interested in the technology as well. In addition to that, what you get instead of funding from being here, you don't get government funding, but we provide connections where, where the technology is relevant to help other agencies and if maybe there's a connection because a company's interested in the technology or currently working on it, we try to provide those connections just to help, help further develop the technology. I think that's pretty much the logistics that I needed to cover. So I want to say to the companies, you guys have had a hard week or a hard couple days. The competition is very steep, but at the end of the day, please remember that you guys were selected by our center chief technologists from representing all of our field centers from across the agency to be here today. And that within itself, is, is it speaks volumes about the technology that you're developing. There will be only three selected, so this is a steep competition, so don't try and take more than one sheet and judge yourself. Might not work, um, but I just want to say best of luck to you guys because I've been here the last two days and seen the technologies and I wouldn't want to be one of the chief technologists that have to select three. They have a hard job. They've done pretty well in the last two cycles, so I'm pretty confident they'll, do, they'll be pretty amazing. But, but speaking about challenges, um, I, I just want to say that uh, the road that you've chosen is not an easy one to be an entrepreneur. 
and you probably have the mindset of an entrepreneur because we're pretty stubborn sometimes <laughs> and you need that because the days there's going to be days you're going to face those challenges and you want to throw in the towel but don't because what you're setting out to do is to change the world I'm about to introduce our speaker, but I want to I want to share a little bit something that I noticed about the Canon leadership here since we've been here. They've been gracious, very very kind to us. But I noticed that they have they have these little pins that they wear on their jacket. And if you know anything about the space agency, we kind of hold some significance to pins. And until I came to work for NASA, I had no idea the significance of that pin. My first day there, I, was, I, I came on board two and a half years ago, and my first day there, I'm going through all the paperwork and the do's and the don'ts and signing everything, and at the end of it, they present us with a pin, and they tell us we can't put the pin on yet, but they actually ask us to swear in and commit that we're going to do everything that we can to support our country's space agency, and it really signified to me the meaning of that pin. So when I came here and I noticed that the Canon leadership have these pins, I wondered, hey, do you guys have that same kind of thing? Do you have to swear in for the Canon or commit? But at the I mean, like at the end of the day, I thought we're not the only ones that do that. I was um, I was on a plane ride heading from the West Coast to the East Coast and. I'm sitting next to a nine-year-old little girl, working frantically. You don't, I don't have internet capability, and so I'm working on those emails I want to send that I don't really get to send while I'm on the plane, but I don't have other ones popping in. So she interrupts me after her movie was finished, because it's about a six-hour flight, and she says, who do you work for, or what do you do, is what she asked. And I said, oh, well, I work for NASA. She said, um, NASA, that's my dream job. And I thought, oh my gosh, she must want to be an astronaut. Nine years old, I was still playing with Barbies. I'm not real sure I was dreaming about working for NASA at nine, and that's just honest. And I said, wow, well, what do you want to do at NASA? She said, I want to build robots. And of course, that pulled at my heartstrings because I love technology and I know that robots is the way to the, the way to the future. And so the fact that this little nine-year-old girl, nine, had already decided that this is what she wanted to do with her life blew my mind. And I take the pin off my lapel, and I tell her the significance of it. And I explain to her, when I came to work for NASA, I was given this pin. And this pin, I had to swear in and commit to, to further develop the technologies to fulfill our missions, to commit to you know, helping to grow our space agency. And I take it off, and I take that pin, and I pin it to her. And I tell her, I want you to keep this, because at nine, you've chosen a very hard path. And the, and the competition is steep. And there's going to be days in your life as you grow older that you might want to give up or throw in the towel. And I said, but you're going to look back and you're going to still have this pin to remind you that it's worth the journey. So entrepreneurs, it's worth the journey. And Elliot Peck is our next speaker. And I'd like to give you my lapel pin. Because what Canon is doing now, you guys are having to transform the industry you've always, you've had around for 80 plus years, right? The journey is tough because you're developing amazing technologies and you're trying to find where they fit. And nine-year-old kids are growing up saying, I want to be a, ro I want to build robots. So your competition is steep too. So if you guys can help me welcome Elliot up here, I'm going to give him one of our NASA pins to su signify this, this time that we had here all the entrepreneurs that are here, the technologies they're developing, and the path that you guys have, he'll never forget it either. So please help me welcome him coming up on stage. Awesome. 
And thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Kira. Uh, I've stood on this stage uh, many times, um, mostly presenting to people within our company. Uh, I've never been presented with something so meaningful <laughs> uh, from uh, such a prestigious organization, and it means a lot to me. I actually was not expecting that. I've never worn two pins before. Um, but first and foremost, uh, I'd like to thank Kira um, for giving us this opportunity to host all of you. Uh, it means a lot to us. Uh, and I'll tell you the backstory in a couple of minutes of how this all came about. Um, but before I get into that, I just wanted to um, thank the people I sat with at dinner last night. Um, Joyce, Jennifer, Harry, Peter, Linda. Uh, after two or three hours sitting at dinner, I kind of felt like, okay, I don't know most of this. <laughs> and we're talking about gateways and technology that's way more advanced than what I typically talk about every day in our day-to-day -day business. So uh, for those that joined me for dinner last night, thank you. Uh, I really enjoyed it. In fact, on the way back, uh, with Ross and Ken, I mentioned it was one of the most engaging dinners I've ever had uh, in, in all my years with the company. By the way, I've been with Canon for uh, 43 years. <clears throat> I know some of you are probably not that old. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what the applause is for, but <laughs> lasting that long. But thank you. But, but interestingly, uh, I was talking with uh, Joyce, who were sitting next to each other last night at dinner, and um, she's from Langley, and said, you know, after the demonstration of a product that can see in absolute darkness, uh, she said, so can that technology take images on the dark side of the moon? And I said, why not? And Larry, I think you can back me up on this. There's enough star power coming on the dark side of the moon that I believe our ME20 camera would do a phenomenal job. Am I correct? I think so, yeah. Okay, so uh, Joyce, we can do it. Um, and, and I think that it aligns to um, something I read recently in the New York Times. It talks about Trump's NASA budget. And the headline is, uh, Trump's NASA budget, more moon, less space station. So uh, you all know what that means. <laughs> But I found it fascinating, and uh, I immediately start to connect uh, where we can see the opportunities for our business, uh, our technology. And, and we, we touched upon this very briefly yesterday, and Larry did an awesome job in uh, talking about our technology. I won't pretend to be uh, the technology person, so Larry, if I say something out of step, please correct me. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I think that what we do should aligned to the needs and problems and solutions that you need filled. And when Kira and I first met back in the fall, uh, it was what problems do you have and how do we help solve those problems? And it's interesting, I work for a very large company, I'll tell you some of the numbers in, in a couple of minutes, but we struggle with the same things, is do we need to invent it ourselves? Do we need to have our engineers spending all this time to invent something where the technologies may already exist? And it may just be a matter of putting the pieces together and finding the right partners uh, and integration to make that all happen. Um, so that takes us to today. Uh, I introduced myself. I, I wear a few different hats with Canon. Uh, I'm executive vice president for our imaging and technologies group. Uh, Larry explained that yesterday. This is essentially all of our camera products, optical products, uh, inkjet printer products, projectors, uh, network cameras, and um, all the cool stuff. Uh, not that copiers aren't cool, but they're not as cool as the stuff that we have. Uh, and I also am chairman and CEO of all of our support operations. Uh, so this is our call centers and uh, break fix, and I'll touch on that in a minute, and we're very proud of the support we give to our users, whether they're buying the first power shot or the most advanced uh, professional. Okay. 
this is probably making everyone really anxious for lunch or a snack. We're not serving guacamole today, but uh, I want to tell this story because you never know where the opportunities and connections are going to happen. Uh, and back th this past fall, 2017, uh, I was at a technology forum out on the West Coast, uh, and in between the general sessions, uh, there was somebody making fresh guacamole. And I was almost ready to go up to my room and take my shoes off for a few minutes. I said, that looks really good. So grabbed a little plate of guacamole, picked up my little stool and sat down. And somebody comes and says, do you mind if I sit down next to you? That was Kira. Uh, not knowing where she was from, uh, I said, sure, you can share your spot next to me. And we had some guacamole uh, and led to a discussion of what you do and what I do. And fast forward to uh, January 30th, we are here in Melville hosting the iTech Forum. So uh, I think over the simplest things, uh, very large connections can happen. So uh, I really do appreciate um, Kira making this happen. She's very persistent and very cooperative and uh, we very much thank the support from NASA. But uh, my point is, is you don't know where the really fruitful connections are gonna come from. Uh, and this has been a very significant change of culture for our company to open up our technologies and be a technology partner uh, because for many years we've been perceived and probably still are perceived as a company that makes great stuff. We make great cameras and great printers and great copiers, uh, but not necessarily perceived as a technology partner. Uh, and for those that got to hear Larry speak yesterday, uh, there is a world of opportunity in technology if we can share and work together. So I'm already 10 minutes into my presentation. Um, so my early days, you know, Kira was telling the story of talking to a nine-year-old on a plane who wanted to be, um, build robotics and work for NASA. Uh, my early days as a kid was, uh, well, of course, we all wanted to be astronauts, but watching the Tang commercials on TV because Tang is what astronauts drank back then. So that was my inspiration of if I drank Tang, I could be an astronaut. Uh, I'm not sure they make Tang anymore. Um, and we were very lucky to uh, get connected with NASA. We worked on a project uh, called A Beautiful Planet. We worked with uh, Terry Virts and uh, James Nyhaus to do an IMAX film using our products. Actually, the camera they shot it with is in our showroom. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please take a walk over. And I am a huge sci-fi fan for those who know me. So uh, my life started with Tang. I watched Star Trek, and that's about as close as I ever got uh, to being an astronaut. <clears throat> so our, our company, I'm not going to cover all this, so don't worry about it. Uh, we're an 80-year-old company. We, our heritage goes back. We started as a medical company way back. Uh, our expertise is in optics and sensors and manufacturing, and over those 80 years have grown to be a world-class company. Our technologies touch much more than just camera products. Uh, we're involved in broadcast products, uh, large copy machines, very large production equipment, semiconductor business, medical equipment, uh, and I'll touch on some of the recent acquisitions and core technologies in a minute, and I promise it will not be technical. Uh, a little bit about the size of our company. Uh, last year, uh, our, our revenue is about $30 billion. Uh, we've got about 200,000 employees worldwide, uh, about 20,000 in the Americas. Uh, and our business is, is pretty well spread out between the Americas and Europe. Uh, and the Asian markets. So uh, a very healthy distribution of our business. Uh, we're a very profitable company. And uh, we're very proud of the um, uh, significant steps we take to maintain our um, investments. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So we invest a lot back into R&D. Uh, we take about 9% of our gross revenue. You could easily do the math of how much business we do. Uh, and that's been very consistent every year, to invest that much money into research and development every year. 
Uh, it's roughly about $3 billion that continually goes into uh, development of new technologies. Uh, and as you can imagine, most of that money does not go into building the next generation of a Rebel camera. Uh, it's much more significant into medical technologies, imaging technologies uh, that will help us uh, become better partners. So one thing that uh, most, many people don't know is we are the number three patent holder worldwide, uh, just behind IBM and Samsung. So uh, we have a lot of intellectual properties and we'd love to be able to find those opportunities where these technologies can help you find these solutions. And actually that goes back uh, many years. Our, our corporate, I'm sorry, that's okay. Uh, our corporate brand, uh, we say see impossible and I think if NASA can have one of their taglines somewhere, I think see impossible is something that uh, would help us all do things that we never thought were possible before. Uh, we're a very well-respected company globally. I'm not going to read all these, uh, but from the most valuable brands, the strength of our company, the financial stability of our company, and just what our company stands for. You know, Kara mentioned uh, about our badge. I, quite frankly, I don't think about every day. I put it on when I go to work in the morning. I've been doing that for 43 years very proudly. Uh, but it is much more symbolic than just putting the pin on in the morning. Uh, it is a well-respected brand, uh, and when Kira and I first connected, it was, oh, you work for Canon, uh, and I don't need to explain so much about uh, our brand. Uh, recent acquisitions we've made, like I said, we also struggle to, do we need to innovate it ourselves, or do we find right partners and we make acquisitions? Uh, recently, we acquired Access Communication, uh, they are the world's largest uh, security camera company based out of Sweden uh, and along with Milestone, uh, also the uh, software that makes all those security cameras work. We own both these companies now. So essentially, we are the world's largest security camera provider in the world. Uh, just recently, within the, past, within the past year, we acquired Toshiba Medical uh, to support and align with our other medical business. Uh, Osei large printing equipment, we've, we acquired them quite a few years ago. We have a long history of imaging products. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of this today. Larry Thorpe did an outstanding job to talk about the importance of our core technologies. Uh, our sensor technologies range from very pedestrian type products and technologies like you'd find in a power shot or a rebel camera, uh, right up to sensors and technologies that will go to 4 million ISO and see in absolute darkness and will be able to photograph the dark side of the moon in color. Uh, and up to a 250 megapixel sensor that can read the writing on a plane six miles away. So our technologies span uh, many different types of products. Uh, our optical expertise, we're now preparing to launch 4K, more 4K products. Uh, and even 8K technology as that starts to become uh, a little bit more acceptable. It, it's interesting, we, we started a business that was really homegrown. The reason I'm showing this is this was a product and technology that was born in the United States and not born in our factories back in Japan. Uh, and typically, we wait for Japan to invent something, they sell, bring it here, and we sell it. Our Cinema EOS line of products was born and developed here. And very shortly after bringing this product to market, we won an Emmy for that. Um, you probably watch TV, you go to the movies, you probably don't pay much attention to about how they shoot it, what types of cameras and lenses, uh, but we are an integrated part of TV and movie production. Uh, so we're very proud in just a few years being able to reach that status. And we're very proud of uh, Beautiful Planet uh, that was shot as a NASA film. Uh, we worked very closely, like I said, with uh, James Nyhouse and NASA. The actual camera is in our showroom, if you'd like to see it. Uh, we pride ourselves on our support operations. I won't take you through all that. 
We have support operations throughout the United States. Uh, for professional, we are now at a stage where we can do next day service on product. If we can't service it, we will give loaners or replace it. We opened a new service and support operation in Burbank, California, if you're out there. I know Jennifer is planning a trip out there soon. Uh, if you're in Burbank, hi Jennifer, uh, we, we'd love to have you come visit this professional service and support facility. Uh, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to host you and take you around. And something that was quite new for us, we did something quite different for our company. We held our first hackathon. I know most of you are going, okay, we do this all the time. Uh, but for the culture of our company to do something like this, uh, we opened up the SDKs and S uh, APIs and uh, let code writers come in, take our products, and develop some new ways to use our technology and products. And uh, we want to do more of these. We're going to be hosting one sometime in the spring. Right, Ken? That's in the plan. Uh, and I think that that's the purpose of why we're all here today is uh, we want to become partners. We want to work with all of you. Uh, we just want to know how we can help you. So with that being said, so again, uh, to Kira and the NASA team, thank you so much. Uh, to all the visionaries and innovators, thank you for taking your time to be with us. And Kira, thank you for the lovely gift. Thank you all.